Hey, it's Sequoia, and you are tuned into BE The Code with special guest Monique Woodard, partner at 500 Startups. Hi, Monique. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Awesome. Thank you for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah. So tell us about 500 Startups and how you got involved. So 500 Startups is an early stage venture capital firm and um, seed program accelerator located at, based in San Francisco and Mountain View, but also very globally. And I've known 500 and 500 folks for a really long time. My co-founder, Chris Bennett, and, fi- and Black Founders, his company, Sold Z, is a 500 startups portfolio company. And I also know Deshaun Amira from Maven really well, and they're also a 500 startups portfolio company. So I've been kind of in the mix with 500 startups for a really long time. And about a year ago, um, I was kind of thinking about going down this venture path and really wanting to kind of change the access to capital piece um, for a lot of underrepresented founders and came into 500 Startups, started talking to them about things that I was thinking about doing and eventually talked to Dave and had lunch with Dave McClure, talked to Christine Tsai quite a bit and um, got to know her, got to know the rest of the team and eventually they asked me to join the team as a venture partner and also join the team to build and run a fund dedicated to investing in uh, underrepresented founders. Nice. So some of your investments have been Blavity, Rojo, Fly. What do you look at when you're looking at a new investment? So really one of the things that I'm looking at is tech categories that are seeing high growth with black and Latino consumers and categories where those consumer groups drive growth um, and either can be used as the primary group or used as a beachhead group um, as you grow into other groups. Um, So I'm really interested in areas of fintech, areas of healthcare, definitely consumer-oriented companies. Companies where I see these consumers have been underserved by the Mm -hmm. current options in the market and um, where I think there's an advantage to focusing on, on black and Latino consumers as a group. Why do you think it's so important to invest in black and Latino consumer founders? Um, so, so I think it's really important to focus on these two consumer groups because that population is really growing. Um, you know, the U.S. is about to shift to a majority minority, um, and 56% of, of, the, of the United States demographic will be um, a person of color. Um, and that includes black and Latino as the largest part of that group. Um, black and Latinos have a combined $2.5 trillion in consumer spending power. Mm. So there's obviously some really some really big economic drivers and some big demographic drivers that kind of drive the thesis around the, the way that I invest. Um, I also think that largely tech companies haven't focused on this group. Mm-hmm. And as, as those demographic shifts start to happen and you start to see that kind of change, you're going to see that not focusing on those groups and the needs of those groups from a product level is going to make a big difference in how successful those tech companies can be. Mm, Awesome. Okay. So I know a lot of people are like, how do I pitch Monique? How do I pitch Monique? So we're going to do a sample pitch. Okay. And then I want you to critique it and say, yay, that works or uh -uh." uh-uh. Okay. Never sit on my desk. Thank you. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) All right. Ready? All right. So... The problem that I'm trying to solve is I go into the hair shop and I am, my appointment's at 12 p.m. And I'm chilling, I might grab my phone, I'm looking at my phone, all of a sudden I'm looking at a magazine. I look at the clock and it's now 3 p.m., right? So I'm going, why did this woman schedule me for 12 and I'm not sitting in the seat till 3? Mm-hmm. So the solution for that problem is I created an app. It's kind of like if you go into like an In-N-Out burger or like a restaurant and there's like a buzzer to tell you when your turn is ready, right? So what happens is my appointment might be at 12, but I get a buzz 15 to 30 minutes prior to say, hey, she's ready for you. You can come now, right? Okay. So this is an exponentially large market. There are 15 thousand hair shops in Oakland currently that are servicing this market Mm -hmm. and I know it's a multi-trillion dollar market black women are consistently getting their hair done um currently within the traction space we've already got Oakland down to maybe about a hundred shops Berkeley we're nailing into like mm, 50 shops currently and we launched two months ago on my team is myself I have a CTO 
She has an MBA from Harvard. She did her CS degree at Stanford. And we have been rocking for the past year. Um, what am I missing in this pitch right now? That's it. Oh, oh, I know what I want. I want $150,000 for 10% equity stake. Okay. All right. All right. So I'm going to ignore the viability or not of that product. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and focus on the way that you pitched it. It was a little rambly. Mm -hmm. I like a really tight pitch. Mm -hmm. Usually when people pitch me, they're coming up to me after a conference. Right. Or they're catching me at some sort of event. And a lot of there's a lot of stuff going on. Right. So the tighter you can get it, the better. Because I probably don't have a lot of time to spend with one person. Mm -hmm. So if, if you start to ramble, you're going to kind of lose your audience. Right. Your audience being me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the, and the things that I want to hear about in the pitch are what problem you're solving. Mm -hmm. um, you definitely told me what the problem was. You did that right up front, which was, which was great. Mm -hmm. You could get to it a little bit faster and okay. more concise. That's even better. Perfect. Um, I want to know what kind of traction you've had, whether this product is on the market and whether you have customers. And um, I also want to know about your business model and... Um, I would also like to get a little bit into the metrics and the business unit economics, mm -hmm. but we could also potentially save that for a deeper conversation. Okay. okay. But you can definitely grab me by saying something, some big metric that you that you've achieved that seems interesting and compelling. Mm. So if you've made, you know, if you're now at you know ten thousand. U.S. Uh, MRR monthly recurring revenue. Mm -hmm. That's something I'm. That's going to really interest me. So you mm. should definitely say that. If you've had, you know, a hundred thousand downloads, that's something that's really going to interest me okay. and grab me. So say that. Um, but focus on focus on the thing that you think is going to grab the investor and the thing that's interesting. And maybe it's the, maybe it's the metrics and the, the traction, the achievement, mm -hmm. or maybe it's something that you're doing from a product level. Like maybe you're you're doing something really interesting with AI, or maybe mm -hmm. you're doing something um, that's a little bit unique and different. Mm -hmm. So try to try to make yourself stand out in that way. Awesome. Okay. Cool. So we know that you were the founder of Black Founders. Mm -hmm. We know that you worked for the San Francisco mayor's office, or we may not know that, but now we do. And now you do. <laughs> so how did you get involved in venture capital? So I've been in tech for a really long time. Um, I started in tech uh, about 15 years ago. And I started out just building things on my own and figuring out how to make them make money. Mm. Um, so really just bootstrapping things that I thought were interesting and um, and you know just figuring out how to make it work. And I was I eventually moved to San Francisco in 2008. Um, a company recruited me because they saw me they saw me building out these performance marketing um, uh, campaigns and they saw me also building out the product side of performance marketing and they asked me to come do that here. So I moved here in 2008. Um, worked for the, worked for them for a while for about a year or two. Um, started this app called Speak Chic, and at the same time started Black Founders with my friends Chris Bennett and Hadia Mujahid and Nana Kuku um, because we were noticing that they're just the black people and the black founders that we knew in the industry just weren't that visible. Mm -hmm. It was often hard to kind of figure out who was who. Right. Um, so we started that as, one, a way to build community, but then, two, as a way to build up an educational resource around things that you needed to know um, to start a business and a venture-backable business uh, in Silicon Valley. And that really expanded uh, across uh, the U.S. to cities like New York and Atlanta and Austin and Chicago and HBCU campuses. So it really took off in a way that we were not necessarily expecting, but it was definitely filling a need that was that was in the market. And then, of course, I went into the mayor's office of civic innovation and worked on open data and worked on municipal broadband access and things like that. And as I was coming out of the mayor's office, I wanted to turn my attention back to underrepresented founders and really drill in on the the funding piece of that okay. because you know you can do all of the community building and all the education that you want to but unless you figure out the financial piece not, that's all for naught so um, that's really when I came into 500 startups and and was telling them about what I was doing and how I ended up kind of on the other side of the table um, I didn't 
I don't know that I intentionally went into it saying I want to be a venture capitalist. Mm, okay, I, that wasn't really my intention. And I think, I think when people do that, it's often harder to become a venture capitalist when they really want to be a venture capitalist. Mm-hmm. That's very true. <laughs> you kind of, you kind of almost end up falling into it mm-hmm. in a lot of ways um, by one doing a lot of things that venture capitalists tend to do, which is I was already mentoring founders and you know saying oh you should apply to 500 startups Mm, you should apply to yc or you should do this with your company so i was already doing those things through my role at at black founders and then you know but through that i kind of found myself having a lot of deal flow which is kind of you know the the lifeblood of any good vc Mm -hmm. and then eventually finding my way into being an actual vc awesome Perfect. So we're going to play a game. Okay. Two truths and a lie. Oh. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you're going to tell me two truths and one lie, but you're not going to tell me which is which, and then okay. I'm going to guess which one is the lie. All right. Ready? Sure. Go. Um, Two truths and a lie. I grew up on a farm. Okay. Uh, I used to work for Luther Campbell. Okay. Um... I moved to New York and started a company that delivered fresh meal delivery to senior citizens. Okay. (laughs) I'm going to go with you moved to New York and started a mail company that delivered fresh meal to senior citizens. Yes, that is a lie. (laughs) (laughs) That was too easy. I just went down my resume and didn't mention that, so I made it way too easy for you. But tell me about you living on a farm. That's so interesting. I, I grew up in Florida, so um, my I, you know, my family come, is a family of farmers, and I grew up on a farm. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, with, and like, then, cows and pigs and, you know. Were you farming? I did not farm. I was a child. <laughs> <laughs> We've got laws against that. <laughs> And then you working for Luther Campbell. Tell me about mm. that. Yeah, so um, Luke was uh, Luke Records was one of my first internships out of college. I went to school in, at University of Miami and lived in Miami for eight years mm-hmm. after that. And uh, my major was was music business and entertainment studies. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, was an intern for Luke and ended wait, up, are we talking about Uncle Uncle Luke? We're talking like about Scar? Uncle Luke Scar. Yes. <laughs> Kept me coming, kept me coming. One of my favorite songs. By the way. <laughs> oh my goodness, that is so uh, funny. Okay. And so I I did a lot of like advancing of his shows. Okay. And then I got decently good at that and ended up like helping him book shows. So, oh my goodness, yeah. fun facts. Yeah. So how do people find you? Um. So I have a website, so they can find me at moniquewoodard.com. Uh, they can also find me at 500startups.com. And um, in lots of places, lots of conferences and cities where, you know, I end up showing my face. Perfect. Well, Malik, thank you so much for coming and hanging with us today. Thank you. We appreciate it. It's Monique Woodard, 500 Startups Partner with BE The Code.